It has now been nearly a month since a Springfield woman was shot and killed in her own home by a sheriff's deputy. Sonia Massey was shot in the head by then Sangamon County Deputy Sean Grayson after she called 911 for help. Grayson has now been charged with murder. Sangamon County Sheriff Jack Campbell met with the media for the first time since the fatal shooting of Sonia Massey to discuss topics from Sean Grayson's history on whether he will stay on as the county's elected sheriff. News Channel 20's Carson Gordy joins us live in Sangamon County with more from his one-on-one -on -one interview. Carson. Uh, but when they snap the way Grayson did, it's, it's almost hard to predict. Before becoming a Sangamon County deputy, Grayson had worked for five other departments, including the Logan County Sheriff's Office. We obtained his disciplinary file from Logan County, but Sheriff Campbell says his department never received those documents. And why wouldn't that be something that you would always require? We did. I was told by Jeff that those documents, what came out from Logan County, you guys were not aware of those situations. Correct. We, we did request them. When we call, we didn't ask for documents. We called up there. We didn't say, we didn't file a FOIA request. So we, we, usually it's an informal process when you contact another police agency to send us what you have on them. Is there anything over the phone verbally you can tell us about them? According to those documents, during a police chase that he was told to end, Grayson drove 110 miles per hour before striking a deer and damaging a squad car. Audio recordings reveal that Grayson's report was inaccurate as he didn't check body cam video. A Logan County chief deputy said that while Grayson worked for the Auburn Police Department, Multiple of Grayson's cases were not prosecuted. He added he thinks it's because of Grayson's history with inaccurate reports. Logan County wrote that Grayson needed more training. And are, are these concerning traits from what we know now? Since I didn't have that information, I, I cannot speculate on that. I know, but now that you do have the information, when we look back 2020 it's, hindsight. It'd be speculation if I try to go, I try to go back with hindsight. It, I didn't have them. I made the choice I had based on the information I had, and, and that's what we have to live with. You know, Sonia called for help, and Grayson failed her. That was his job to give her the help that she called for. And I will never understand why he snapped the way he did. There was nothing in his background that would have led us to believe this would happen. Now, despite calls from some of Sonia Massey's family members and elected officials, Sheriff Campbell says he is not resigning his position. Coming up on KHQA News at 10, we bring you the second part of this series where Sheriff Campbell discusses what changes could be in store for the Sheriff's Office. Well, the night before Sonia Massey was fatally shot by an officer in Illinois, her mother called 911 to report her daughter was having a mental breakdown. The Sangamon County Sheriff's Office just released the audio of the call. Donna Massey tells operators she thinks her daughter is a paranoid schizophrenic. She begs for officers not to hurt her daughter. She's being sporadic and I don't want her, I don't want you guys to hurt her, please. And please don't send no combative policemen that are prejudiced, please. Okay, well that, that would be done on the They just do their job, okay? No, they're all, uh, they're scary. I'm scared of the police. Outrage over Massey's killing is growing as more information reveals authorities knew about her mental health concerns before the incident. 30-year-old Sangamon County Sheriff's Deputy Sean Grayson was indicted on first-degree murder counts and official misconduct. He pleaded not guilty. Well, it's been nearly a month since a Springfield, Illinois mother was shot and killed by a Sangamon County Sheriff's deputy. Sonia Massey was shot in the head by then Sangamon County Deputy Sean Grayson after she called 911 for help. The community has since held multiple rallies and protests and walks demanding accountability and change from the Sheriff's Department. Tonight, Sheriff Jack Campbell answering what, ch what changes need to be made to make sure this never happens again. During our sister station's one-on-one -on -one interview, Sangamon County, Illinois Sheriff Jack Campbell said this has been the toughest time of his career in law enforcement and says the Sheriff's Office will look at changes after this shooting. But we need to make, reassure the public that this is not the norm. Our, our deputies go on thousands of calls a year and they do it right. Sean Grayson did not do it right and he and he alone is responsible for that. And we will spend the rest of my career um, and most of the men and women here are trying to rebuild that trust. I asked Sheriff Campbell if he expects the hiring practices to change for Sangamon County Sheriff's Office after Sean Grayson fatally shot Sonia Massey. One area is a more thorough look into the background of past employment. 
So we, we it usually it's an informal process when you contact another police agency to send us what you have on them. Is there anything over the phone verbally you can tell us about them? Uh, you know, we not did not receive all the information from some of his previous employers that, that came out afterwards. And uh, maybe we need to take a look at that. And I, I also asked Sheriff Campbell if they'll provide more training on how to help people who have mental health issues. He said Grayson had training in that area. Uh, in fact, he was a CIT officer. Um, he had taken other mental health, um, you know, courses at the state, at the police academy, and he, he had more than enough training uh, to deal with that situation. But it's something that we want to provide as much as we possibly can, especially as we see the problem grow. And we will continue to look for those ideas and look for training classes and courses and individuals that can help us do our jobs better. And that was Carson Gordy reporting. We also asked Campbell for an update on the second deputy. The deputy whose name hasn't been released was placed on administrative leave. He hasn't been charged with any wrongdoing. Campbell says he hopes the deputy will eventually be well enough to go back on patrol.